So, welcome back. Now, we come to the end of this course okay, and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed this course. I hope that you might have also enjoyed the course. If you have any problem, please let us know. Let uh, We will try to solve your issues and solve your problem. I would now quickly want to revise the course or will summarize the course that what is the main base aim of this course, what we have tried to do and you may have get benefited with some of this content. So, what we initially did the main motive of this course was as I said that multi-phase flow reactors are heart of any chemical process industries. So, if you go for any process, okay, you go for uh, any industry, petroleum industry, pharmaceutical industry, food industry, treatment places, you go for bulk chemical industries, you go for fine chemical industries, you go for power plants, any places, any chemical related industries, you go for mining, you go for steel processing, you will see that everywhere there is a multi-phase flow which is taking place okay? and the multi-phase flow is generally the heart of that industry. You will see that whatever the reactor or the processes they are using the most critical process is actually the multi-phase flow process. And we said that the multi-phase flow process is a very ongoing research topic, very hot topic of the research and why it is still an ongoing topic and very hot topic of research is that the phenomenon governing in the multi-phase flow depends on different parameters and that most critical parameter is that it depends on what type of fluids you are handling whether you are using gas solid, whether you are using liquid solid, whether you are using gas liquid, whether you are using liquid liquid and all. So, it depends on that type of the liquid, it depends on the column geometry whether you are operating a vertical column, whether you are operating a horizontal column. It depends on column dimensions whether you are operating a 1 inch column, 2 inch column, 1 meter column, 5 meter column. It depends on the column inclination also whether you are using a say vertical or horizontal, whether the column is inclined at 45 degree or so. So, there are lot of parameters it depends on okay? and that is the reason that the design and the scale up of these equipment or this kind of a processes is still a challenge. And most of the time it depends on the art rather than the science. So, what we have tried to do in this course, we have tried to remove the art part of it that we come over the empirical correlation, we try to see that how to do the basic force balance, basic material balance, basic we write the transport equations in such a way that we can understand the dynamics of the bed. So, we what we did we first started with the basic introduction of the course we introduced the different terminology okay? like I introduced that what is the wide fraction, number density, what is the autocorrelation function, uh, what is the mixture density and all. So, we started with the very basic definitions of the multiphase flow. We try to understand different kind of flow pattern which take place. Now, once we are going with the flow patterns which is very very critical because again the behavior of the bed depends on that what regime you are operating. So, say for the gas liquid whether you are operating in the bubbly regime, whether you are operating in the slug flow regime, churn turbulent regime and all. So, so on each kind of phase interaction have a different regimes and your bed behavior is largely depends on that what regimes you are operating. So, we have tried to discuss the regimes of operation for the gas liquid, for the liquid solid for the gas solid and for the liquid liquid both. So, all these things we have tried to understand the different regimes, we have tried to see that why how these regimes are dependent on the column geometry, it means the column inclination and column dimensions. So, that makes the life further complicated that these regimes are dependent on the column uh, geometry, inclination and as well as the column dimensions okay? and the fluid type, if you change the fluid type the your regimes will change. So, we have tried to classify the regimes, we have tried to understand that for different processes what type of regimes you should operate, what is the advantage of each regime, what is the disadvantage of each regime, what is the typical characteristics of each regime. Then we started with the your first principle equations, we started with the basic force balance, we have tried to do the basic force balance, we have tried to derive the uh, Reynolds transport theorem, from Reynolds transport theorem we derived the Navistock equation or momentum equation. And then from both momentum equation, we have simplified it for the one dimensional domain. So, that we can easily understand the dynamics removing the critical part of the mathematics. So, that we can focus more on the force balances and all. So, we have done that single dimensional equation we have written for again we started with the gas liquid, we have done it for the separated flow, we have done it for the homogeneous flow, we have done it for the bubbly flow, we have done it for the annular flow, we have written the basic equation 
mathematical equation starting from the first principle of the force balance or momentum balance we have developed the equation for the pressure drop for all these conditions. So, that you can see that how the different regime pressure drop will be different. We have also discussed some of the empirical correlations like locart martellini equation which may not be very accurate, but gives a very good idea about the pressure drop in a very short time. So, you have tried to blend it both the first principle as well as the empirical equations together to understand the hardcore knowledge or to understand the physics of the multiphase flow and also to keep the calculation handy. Okay, so, that we can easily calculate it, it is not like you need to wait for 1 month or 10 days or 20 days to get the first hand calculations. So, that is why we discussed the in blend of both, we blended it the first principle as well as the empirical correlations together. We have again developed the particle tracking equation for the single particles, we have keep on increasing the flow that uh, forces we complicate the problem, we first initially that only particle is falling down. Then we are saying the particle is moving horizontal, first we started actually with the horizontal where only drag was there, then we said that the particle is moving downward, it means settling down drag and gravity was taking a place, then we introduced buoyancy forces, then we introduced the any other forces like the electro forces forces, electrical forces that if it is there, how the particle motions will be there and we try to see that how the particle tracking can be take place in the Lagrangian tracking domain. Then once we have done for the 1D models, what we have done, we have started moving to the more complicated mathematical model, which is kind of a current state of the art. So, once you understood the one dimensional model, the now we try to introduce the basic part of the mathematics also to see that how we can do it in the three dimensional domain. So, we introduce the different models, which is being critically used in the industry or in academia to understand this kind of reactor behavior. We started with the Lagrangian track, which we have already discussed, then algebraic slip model, we discuss about the model equations, the major assumptions for which the model has been developed and the limitation of each model. So, we discuss the algebraic slip, we discuss the Euler Euler, we discuss the Euler Lagrangian model for both gas liquid gas solid and liquid solid all three these phases we have discussed and simply it is also applicable to the liquid liquid. So, we discuss the different mathematical model which is being there, we discuss the advantage and disadvantage of each model, limitation of each model, capabilities of each model, what you can expect from the model results, okay, where you cannot use, where you can use and all. So, all those things we have tried to discuss and then we found that all these models are still not kind of you can say the matured enough that you can solely depend on the model predictions particularly for the multiphase flow. And therefore, you need a experimental validation, you need a experimental input to see that and why it is the state because several these models use several empirically developed correlations and we do not know whether those empirically developed correlations are correct. So, to understand that we discuss the different forces which is being used in this model like drag force lift force, virtual mass force, basset history forces, all those forces we have tried to see and we have discussed the different correlations available for these forces which may some of these correlations are developed empirically where like uh, so the drag we have discussed about the Gidaspo, Syam Lal, say Seeler Nauman in the gas liquid flow, Morsi Alexander for the gas liquid. So, we have discussed the spectrum of the drag forces, we have seen that how these drag forces are being developed, empirically developed actually and once you are using these developed drag forces in your numerical model, definitely your prediction of the numerical model is going to depend on the what is the accuracy of your drag model and to understand whether your drag model is valid there or not, you have to have the experimental validation. Drag is a very simple example that is why I am giving, but there are several other correlations also which we have used like for the gas solid, we have used the solid as a continuum say in the Euler Euler, we have developed several empirical correlations like uh, for the solid viscosity Lun uh, et al and all, so bulk viscosity, this will uh, this, all those things we have discussed, developed and those things you need ex serious experimental validations. So, we discuss all those parameters, then we also discuss about the drag that how the single particle and multi-particle drag will change and how the richardson jackie correlation comes into the picture, how the drag can be written in form of the beta or KMF like different uh, books follows the different uh, correlations. Okay. And then we move towards the experimental validation that how you can do the experimental validation, what are the different techniques available current date as of now. We develop some briefly uh, on this part okay, and uh, we try to understand the limitation and advantage of each technique, it means capabilities of each technique. What again similar way what you can expect from this technique, what is the accuracy, whether it can be used for the validation or not. And thereafter we started with the different type of reactor. So, initially what we have done, we have discussed about the bubble column reactor, 
we have discussed again uh, that what is the bubble column reactor, what is the application of this, how the hydrodynamics in the bubble column depends, how to calculate the bubble diameter, how to calculate the bubble velocity, how this bubble coalescence will change the bubble behavior, what is the different type of the bubble column reactor available what is the advantage and disadvantage of each reactor and we again use the basic principle to calculate the first principle whatever the way we have developed the single dimensional equation. We did the force balance, we tried to develop the equation for the bubble velocity, we developed the equation for the bubble diameter calculation all. So, all those things we have done and we have tried to develop that do the basic force balance. So, that you can in a reactor you can do that force balance whatever we have done. Then we move to the gas solid reactor. We discussed the first the packed bed reactor, again we discussed the advantage of the packed bed reactor. Then from the basic first principle again we did the force balance, we see that how the force balance take place in the packed bed reactor. For different velocity, low velocity and higher velocity we have discussed about the pressure drop how it will change. So, we have discussed the kronjic karman equation, we discussed the black plumber equation and then the combination of that is actually called Ergon equation. So, we discussed about the Ergon equation that how it has been derived, how the sphericity take up uh, this particle shape take up role in that or uh, sphericity play a role in that we discuss all those things. And then finally, we move towards the gas solid fluidized bed reactor or say fluidized bed reactor. We discuss the advantage of the fluidized bed reactor over the packed bed like better heat and mass transfer coefficient. We discuss that how critical it is to operate a fluidized bed and how the hydrodynamics plays a such a critical role as while discussing we said that the hydrodynamics of the bubble fluidized bed actually depends on many parameters like column inclination, column angle, column geometry whether it is vertical or conical. Then this is the gas velocity or the fluid velocity I will say what is your particle size, what is your particle density, it means the Gildart classification of the particle, what group of the Gildart particle you are using, what is your particle size distribution, whether you want to operate a, a circulating bed or you want to operate a batch react bed or I mean say I will say that from the till the turbulent bed. So, all those things change your dynamics and what we have tried to understand that to how to analyze the system, what is the critical parameter once you do that system and how to calculate the minimum fluidization velocity. So, inherently in this course the idea was to expose you with the different kind of a multiphase flow reactors, the problems which you face in different type of multiphase flow reactors, how the basic principles can be used, the basic force balance or basic momentum balance can be used to analyze those kind of a problem what you should look for in this uh, reactors, what is the critical things which you should analyze while designing this reactors and all. So, this was the whole idea to introduce you about the multiphase flow, different reactors used in the multiphase flow and to give you idea that how critical they are and how by using the very basic first principle you can analyze this system. I hope this course will be enjoying for you, you must have enjoyed this course, I just hope this. And if any problem is there, please feel free to contact us. With this, I rest this course and thanks a lot.